Hi everyone, we're back in the garage. It's raining outside, so we're going to continue the 12k service on this Tiger Sport 1050. It's a 2019 model, so it will vary between different models, but what I'm doing here is pretty much the same for most. Usual disclaimer, not a mechanic. This is a guide. Do it at your own risk. If you're unsure, please use a garage and a motor qualified motorcycle mechanic. Today I'm going to do the coolant change, so that should be fairly straightforward. It does involve removing the uh, the fairings on the side to get out the bits you need to. It involves disconnecting uh, the water pump hose down here and uh, refilling. Be careful with um, antifreeze. So a couple of things, one it's not nice for you, it's toxic, but two, if you've got a cat they love it and it'll kill them so make sure you do this well out the way of of any animals and um, keep it off your skin keep it off your paintwork and dispose of it properly please because if you don't you could end up uh, killing some defenseless creatures right let's get cracking we'll get these ferns off i've took these off in another video so i won't show how to do that so i'm going to crack on with that and I'll come back when the panels are off. So I've got the fairings off. That is your radiator cap. We're going to loosen that off. We also need to undo the crankcase bleed screw, which is this fella here. So if you look for where your exhaust mounted on here and then look just below it. And there's also and this side on top of the radiator this is a a bleed screw just here and we need to loosen that off and that will let the air out and let the uh, coolant out and again we can take an opportunity to get in there and give that a clean with all of this off right we undo the radiator cap Buried in a bit. Oh, a bit tight, but we undo the radiator cap. Whoa. Coolant coming out already. I'll leave that to run out. Now we're going to undo the bleed valve, and this is a, a T27 Torx bit I've got here. It looks like you can use a spanner on it as well, but we'll just loosen that off and take it out. That's the bleed screw removing. You can see everything's just starting to drip now. So we've got an 8mm socket now to get that drain plug. And I expect a load more is going to come out when I undo this one. So as soon as you Crack that nut, it's finger tight. These screws are quite long by the way. There we go. Like I said it would go everywhere. Leave that to do its bit. So the next thing we're gonna do is loosen this clip off on the water pump. We just squeeze these together, slide it back, and then wiggle that cable off, and then a whole load more coolant will come out of here. And then that's the system hopefully drained. Right, that's that bit. And that has a tight grip. Let's see if we can tease this off now. That's really tight. I'll try and push it with a very blunt screwdriver. Right, give up on the bottom one. I've undone the top one, which was easier. I just have to undo this loop. This here, that's held on with a screw. So I'll undo that, and then uh, that will allow us to bend this pipe down and get the remaining stuff in the bottom of there. If anyone's got any tips on how to remove hoses like this, that would be very useful, because it is a bit of a struggle and you're always scared of damaging them. 
Okay, so I've loosened that clip off, put this down and a whole load more fluid came out, it's come out all over the floor, I'll have to tidy that up. But we're now in a position to put everything back together and fill it up again. So I've put that clip back on and so we'll push this back through, clip it on and do it up. That's the hose attached. I've screwed that back up and now we're going to put the crankcase screw in. They say to use a new washer. I haven't got a new washer. I should have bought one, but I'm going to reuse the old one. So we're just going to put this back in its hole up here and tighten that up. All right. So with that screw back in place, we've got to put some coolant in here. So I'll need some sort of uh, funnel because tanks in the way. Um, you leave the bleed screw on the other side undone to the air out and we slowly fill this up until you can actually see the coolant uh, at the top of the radiator and then you've got to check out the bleed screw side to make sure you can see coolant on the bleed screw side um, if you can't uh, you've got to sort of try and I don't know somehow suck the uh, coolant through you definitely need to use a pump or something to do with that do not use your mouth you'll regret that you'll be ill so the coolant is dt 53 Oat coolant now it's not what it says in the manual the manual says you want hd4x now i couldn't find that anywhere and when i've read up apparently this is the um, replacement for it and recommended for all water-cooled um, Triumph motorcycles. So hopefully that's correct. So the first thing you notice is this is orange or orangey, orangey brown in there and the old was green so they are different but like I say I have been told this is the right stuff and it goes in here. That still didn't take much more coolant with the engine running. You can see now it's brimful. I think what I'll have to do is to uh, give it a run and keep an eye on that level because I don't think I put in what it should have taken, which is a worry. So like I said, I got about one and a half litres in and I poured what came out and there's about one and a half litres in there. So what came out has gone in. The manual says it should be 2.6 litres. Where that is, I don't know whether there's been an airlock or something in the um, the pipes. I don't know. But the thing is, what went out went in, so it should be full. There's the reservoir level and there's the minimum level. So that's below. Um, I will top this up and see what happens. Pour it in there. I've been told if you put too much in, it'll all come pissing out somewhere. Uh, but... I'm just going to top that up and then see what happens when we've had the bike running for a while, enough time for it to get up to temperature. So that is the coolant changed. Um, all I've got to do is put all the fairings back on, the seat and everything. Um, but we've seen that in another video. Uh, next video is going to be uh, the front forks. So we're going to take the forks out and change the oil. So I've got an ABBA sky lift, which allows me to lift the whole thing up. And after I've done the forks, I'll do the steer and head bearings and give them a lubrication. And so that's coming up in the future one. If you liked it, give it a like, subscribe. I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe. My target is to get to 1,000 subscribers. I'm at about 550 or something at the moment, so any help would be appreciated. Um, but until next time, Gordon from Up North Biker in the garage saying see you later.